Mr. Anu is the next speaker. Good morning, Mr. Hogan. The bad news is that I will be your inquisitor twice today. Now, would you accept an invitation to the eastern region of the UK so that myself, a local MEP, and Elizabeth Truss, a local MP, who just happens to be the Secretary of State for Agriculture in the UK, uh, can show you round? We'll take you to meet oilseed rape growers who will relate their experiences of the neonicotinoid ban and its serious environmental consequences. Will you come to my own farm and inspect my wildflower mix that hums with bees in summer and demonstrates the real way to help bees? We could call in at my free-range egg unit so that my poultryman, James Sizeland, can explain the welfare horrors of the impending beak trimming ban in his own words. We would visit a local herb grower whose business is seriously threatened by the EU pesticide registration rules. We could also uh, demonstrate how difficult it is to comply with the NVZ rules. Will you be our guest? Well, don't, expe don't, expect me, don't expect me to farm your land as well. <laughs> You've covered a broad range of subjects I should be familiar with on your farm, but I am, unfortunately I have to plead ignorance in relation to the bees and all of the biodiversity in addition to the problems you have on your farm. You're spending too much time here, obviously. Um, but I will, I will give you a commitment that I will be visiting every member state uh, and uh, I will give you a commitment that that will include the UK and hopefully that we'll be able to get over any referendum difficulties you might have in the future that we'll be able to continue to do so over the complete five-year term. Uh, but you have mentioned some very important issues in relation to uh, real life and real farming challenges uh, that are on, on every farm. And you, know, you have been involved as well as other members of the committee in drawing up the necessary proposals and plans for the next five years as part of the CAP reform. And it's in the implementation. The devil is always in the detail. So let's see, can we work together to work some of those out in terms of the commitment I've given to try and uh, harmonize and simplify the process. Uh, but I, I would look forward perhaps maybe on a, uh, visiting maybe some of the farms in the UK and perhaps if I'm lucky it might be yours. Another 45 minutes has expired and the floor goes to Mr. Anu. There is a real contradiction in the CAP reform in relation to sugar. The sugar beet industry will be liberalised liberalized from quotas whilst the cane refiners remain mired in EU legislation. The legislation threatens 200 jobs in my constituency and hits the UK harder proportionate than other member states. Can we agree that this goes on our venue of our up and coming tour, uh, the sugar refinery on the Thames Estuary, and from there it's not very far to Ashford Market where you will see they have to open the mouths of perhaps three or 4,000 sheep every market day to see if the first pair of uh, incisors have erupted. With a stroke of a pen that could be changed to the second pair and that would stop all that work altogether. I want to throw my weight behind the review of the three-crop rule. N many people will not be able to grow oilseed rape in the face of the neonicotinoid seed dressing ban, and that's going to create a problem. Uh, and finally, do you support the fact that member states ought to have the uh, authority to grow, cultivate GM crops? Thank you. Three-crop rule, I suppose, is you know, a, very, a vexatious issue, I'm sure. Uh, but it's good farming practice to have good crop rotation. Yes, yes, I know, yeah, I know, yes, I know. Yeah, yes, sure, let's see the practical implementation of a reform that you just agreed to and see how it works as part of any review that we're doing. But certainly crop diversification is an important component of what was agreed. Uh, the practical implementation of that maybe might find difficulties depending on the, the size of your farm, depending on the terrain, uh, and let's have a look at that. Uh, in relation to sugar, uh, the EU is, uh, uh, as somebody who comes from a country that used to have a sugar industry uh, and wishes to have it again, provided we're competitive, uh, I certainly can be delighted to know that there is competition in your area. Uh, there is certainly no, as you know, in any liberalised democracy, no business is guaranteed. Uh, uh, but the relative competitiveness of EU beet growing produ uh, sugar producers vis-à-vis -vis the production of cane sugar uh, in developing countries will determine the new market uh, shares of sugar after the end of quotas. Most, most refiners are located far from the, the main beet growing regions 
which gives them an advantage to sell sugar into their own regions. Uh, and uh, I, I certainly will maybe take you up on the, on the offer of having a look at the particular problem once I'm in your area uh, uh, for, to see what the particular application of the policy ha is having uh, following the removal of sugar quotas. So maybe after next March we might be able to arrange that particular vi visit. Um, as Minister for the Environment, I was involved in discussions regarding GMOs where uh, DG Sanko brought forward proposals in terms of uh, the uh, uh, last July to the, to the Luxembourg Council uh, and uh, certainly this seems to be uh, the issue of subsidiarity in terms of uh, authorization and cultivation is a very vexed one. Now, President-elect Juncker has made it very clear in his statement to the Parliament uh, you know, that if member states are against, that that should be, carry equal weight with scientific advice in relation to GMOs. So I think that debate uh, is, is probably about to start.